Hello there, I'm uh, Simon and uh, I'm going to organize this uh, tour of Beetle with uh, Matthew. Hi there. So I'm uh, Simon, uh, Evang Cloud BI Evangelist at, uh, at Beetle and uh, Matthew is uh, responsible for the international development of Beetle. Hi there. Before we start, let me tell you that we are doing this demo in the warm south of France where our developers uh, first created our solutions and where they, they keep updating it on a daily basis. Also, for anyone who just won wander here and, he, and, and, and if you're saying, hey, but what the heck is going on here? Let me just remind you quickly what Beetle is and what Beetle does. We are an all-in-one BI solution. Uh, we help you analyze your data, uh, slice it, and uh, publish uh, the results of your analysis by uh, PDF, Excel, or in a very, very interactive way that, uh, that uh, we will show you in this uh, tour of Beetle. So, uh, I'm uh, here in the home of Beetle. That's what you'll see when you connect to your account and this is a file that I'm going to be using for this demo. This is a classic Excel file. Mm -hmm. uh, we does that mean you can only use Excel files? Oh no, uh, you know, it's just a classic example so you know oh, okay, we're not okay, doing okay. some fancy stuff but right. we, we, we can do some pretty awesome stuff. You're going to see when I import my data, you know, we have a wide variety of sources that we can import. Right, I got just a bit worried there for a second. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't worry. Um, also, as you can see, uh, we have a we have a header with um, well, with a basic simple header with uh, some uh, some date, salesperson, uh, cities, some that that is helping you help, helping us make sense of uh, the information that, uh, that we have, and then all the information. But I want to uh, point out uh, now that uh, this file is not truly properly formatted. A lot of BI tools want your data to be really uh, clean. Um, they want, you know, really this header, no holes, no uh, weird stuff. Your dates need to respect a, a very strict pattern. Um, and that's an important point that will. Uh, discuss a, a, a little more um, well, uh, when, when we'll uh, import our file. So I'm going to import my file but before I want to uh, in the same way that I've shown you uh, my, my cell file I want to uh, give you uh, some of the basics uh, of, of what, I, what, what happens uh, when I, when I con connect on my, my home, when I connect on, on my Beetle app. I have my connectors here. Mm -hmm. My connectors are simply a da data source. So here, first dashboard sales, it's something that I've created with an Excel file. And uh, Salesforce, my sales, well, simply data that I've extracted from uh, Salesforce. And automatically, when you create a connector, so connector equals data source. And when you create a connector, B2 is going to automatically generate matrix Metrics are made up of uh, things that you track. They are uh, aggregates, uh, information, KPIs, and all those metrics from the connectors are regrouped in a dashboard. So, hey, why do we have a connector and a dashboard? I mean, isn't it the same thing? It certainly is. But no, Matthew, no. Damn it. No, of course not, because a dashboard can regroup information that you are, you have taken from a, from several connectors. So it can really blend and mix information coming from Excel, from Google Analytics, from Salesforce in the same dashboard. So hang on, Simon, you're telling me it's actually like multi-sources. Yeah, you, you can, I mean, what's the point of regrouping, regrouping information if you, if you cannot regroup them? So you regroup everything in the same dashboard, you okay. mix everything. You're going to show us that. Exactly. So we import. We create a new connector. Uh, as you can see, you know that's what we were saying. We are multi-source. So we have classic flat files, Excel files, CSV, Google spreadsheet, and so on. But we also have some web apps, 
we have uh, social networks, we have um, classic CRM, the king of CRM, Salesforce. Of course. What's the one here I don't know, uh, I don't know about, sorry, it's web services, what's that? Oh, well, it's pretty awesome. It's oh. um, it's kind of um, an undefined uh, connector, uh, uh, um, an unborn connector, if you wish. Um, it's it's a half. Uh, it, it's it's a connector that is not really defined, so it's universal. Um, you 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 can use a classic protocol uh, of the API, so you know get, post, uh, put, and you can extract pretty much any information that you want to extract from any web services. So we provide a, a, a handy and easy to understand uh, UX for non-developers mm -hmm. uh, for them to create their own web connectors okay. for uh, data um, for which we do not have a dedicated con connector yet. All right, okay, so kind of plug and play. Sure, yeah. Awesome. And well, you know, classic databases. Mm -hmm. We connect with uh, pretty much any uh, SQL base uh, Databases, mm -hmm. and in our big data offer, we uh, can even uh, tackle some uh, some of the big guys, uh, such as Redshift, uh, MongoDB, uh, BigQuery. Okay. So big data, big data stuff. But today, small data. We're going to select Excel. Yeah, you're right. Because small is beautiful. Indeed. So, second sales dashboard. And you need small data, but sometimes big issues. Because as you can see, my data is not properly formatted. Mm. I have those two empty lines. I have, uh, I don't know, this, this word, teach, teach. So it's, I don't know what's it's, what's the, what the hell is it doing here. I have an empty con. Let's see what we can do. It, it's pretty messy. And well, I, I'll tell you what you can do, nothing. With a lot of VI dashboards, uh, with a lot of solutions right now, you need to, to go back to, the, to your source and spend uh, an awful lot of time cleaning it. But not with Beetle. Indeed, not with Beetle. Uh, so I'm going to select it here on my uh, desktop. Mm -hmm. I'm going to select my first sheet, so really I have the choice here. And I'm going to uh, select more options. And so really, I. I have a lot of flexibility. I can select a specific range of cells and I can ignore some rows and ignore some columns. So you can really update your data selectively. So here I'm going to select my first two uh, lines. So I want to ignore those two rows. Yeah. The two first rows because they are not relevant, not important. They are just going to confuse us and Beetle. And we're going to do the same thing with this column. So the second step, Beetle is analyzing your data. Um, basically, he's looking and screening your files from for any uh, incoherencies. Okay. Here, uh, it, things went well. Okay. But you know, if if something is going wrong, he's going to say, "What the heck is going on here? Uh, you say we, you have numerical values. Why 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 are we, why we have a, a word uh, here in this column? Do, do you want to correct this or is it normal?" And uh, here. Uh, this is uh, again an example of the flexibilities that you have in Beetle. You can configure your uh, your uh, dates. Mm -hmm. So here everything went well because we have a specific uh, date period and it's recognized as a date with uh, in Excel. So no issues. But um, let's say you have a, a weird uh, date, a date that is date field that is badly uh, formatted. Mm -hmm. You can go not so not recognized as a date in Excel. We, you have a lot of flexibility um, in Beetle, and you can train Beetle for him to remember. Because what you need to understand right now is that uh, we are we are doing this important, going through a lot of detail. But you can skip all this and automate your import for the next um, for the next uh, next next time you will import data. You can really automate your uh, your your import in Beetle, so you'll do these steps only once. So. It, it, it's always easy, um, interesting to take a, a bit, some, some, take a bit of your time to uh, configure it properly. Yeah, you do it only once, and and, and that's for good. Yeah. Okay. Such as you know, training Beetle to recognize the way you uh, are um, entering your dates in your files. So we have um, 
So you can tell Beetle that, for example, uh, product ID is a date. It could be a date. Mm -hmm. And uh, you select a wide variety of patterns. And you can even customize it. Yeah. You have a full uh, license to, um, to really innovate in uh, the way you are uh, entering your dates. Okay. And then the 007 for dates. Indeed. Oh. Okay, so configure your dates. Um, could, could you actually talk us through this, please, Simon? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, you have uh, the field date. Um, it has been uh, seen directly by Beetle. You have uh, your date field, and it's structured like a date uh, in Excel. So Beetle is recognizing it, and it has uh, created it uh, directly. Okay. Uh, you could also so automate it. Yeah, it's automated, and uh, you could if if you if you have changed your mind or, or if you know that the events uh, did not occur uh, in this period, you could go and edit this uh, this field. Oh, okay, cool. And you could even uh, uh, it could you could do even more uh, by selecting a date among the among various de detected detected fields. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, you have a, a date field that is not structured as a date in Excel. Well, you'll be able to explain to Beetle what a date field for you what what is for you a date field, and you'll be able to go into uh, date format and select a format. Okay. Or you, you can even customize it. I can I can see here. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, you can explain really um, uh, what for you is a is a day field, and, uh, and and you you will have a um, total freedom in how you define uh, dates. You could uh, write it uh, with letters and explain uh, what you do to Beetle and completely automate that. Okay. And you will then uh, be able to recognize the way you write dates. Awesome. So, moving on. Uh, filters and metrics. Okay, so um, I seem to remember that you mentioned filters would be non-numerical values and metrics would be numerical values. Is correct? Exactly. Beetle, uh, in this first step, is doing again a lot of the work for you. <laughs> so uh, Beetle on, uh, on one side of the screen uh, is showing you all your filters so it's all the uh, qualitative information so you have uh, the cities, the salesperson uh, in this uh, column, in this filter column. Mm -hmm. These are uh, the filters that you will be able to apply to your uh, KPIs, to your metrics okay. and the metrics are on the other column so you for, for example, Simon, so like I could see product ID. Uh, would that be more more likely to be a filter? Than yes, you're right. If we uh, look at the Excel file, um, product ID is a uh, is a ca category. Mm -hmm. We we are not saying that we have uh, 45 products. It's just uh, the idea of the product. So it's it's really a, a category. Mm -hmm. uh, but since it was a numerical uh, information. Uh, Beetle uh, has uh, considered it uh, as a metric, okay. but uh, you know, no worries. I okay. can take my uh, product ID, drag it and drop it oh, in the filter column. Oh. Yeah, absolutely awesome. Okay, um, and if, oh, so that means that I, I, I can see the double arrows there. So that means we I can use actually filters and put them into matrix and way around. No, uh, <laughs> however, that, that will make uh, no sense. Uh, okay. You you cannot uh, convert uh, letters into uh, in, in, into numbers. So uh, you okay. you cannot uh, uh, transfer uh, a filter and and turn it into a metric. Sure. However, however, metrics can be considered as uh, categories. Sure. Okay. Does make sense. Okay. So the third. Uh, so the, four, uh, the fourth step um, really enables you to select the data that you want to import um, very precisely. So you can uh, add custom fields, define import conditions, or uh, create hierarchies. Um, so you can really slice data um, and uh, import only the data that matters to you. Mm. Basically, it's like you, you give sense to your data. Yes, yeah. you are already uh, in the process of analyzing your data when you import it. Okay, brilliant. So I'm going to select the add custom fields and uh, I'm going to create hierarchies. Okay. 
right now. The funk so bro. <laughs> um, I'm going to add a filter, and uh, it's going to be the manager filter. Um, I could I could create a new date field or a, a new metrics a new metric. And right now I'm going to create a new filter, and I'm going to add this filter. So it's a bit like creating a new column in Excel. As you can see, we have salesperson, mm -hmm. but there are no managers. Mm, One of worries. Yeah. yeah. We will here. We'll be here. We're going to create the field manager, and by default, I'm going to be the manager, and I'm going to add a condition. So uh, for the field salesperson, uh, when uh, so when your salesperson will be different from new class. Matthew, it's okay. Matt will be uh, will be the manager. I don't want to do that. Okay. If I have <laughs> well, to. for the purpose purpose of the example, you will. Okay. Well. And uh, and well, that's done. We have our new filter. So you can uh, of course uh, add new conditions and uh, um, slice your data data even more precisely. Yeah. Excuse me, Simon. Can I actually get rid of this filter? Oh, at sure. At some point. Yeah. You put it in the garbage. Okay. You can even uh, update it or uh, uh, refine it. Okay. Well, okay. And here we are creating our hierarchies. And now it's done. Uh, now that we have uh, parameters and define our conditions to import the data, we can uh, save and uh, finally import the data. So when the file is uh, complex, uh, it might take a few minutes, but uh, and, and you you might have to check uh, your uh, your uh, inbox. your inbox. But you, since uh, it's uh, we Once only have a. Since there is uh, since there's only a few thousand lines uh, in our uh, in our Excel files, it only takes a few seconds. As you can see, uh, Bizo is going to create automatically KPIs and a dashboard. So from this connector, from this data source, Bizo is creating several KPIs, several metrics automatically, and it's also creating a whole dashboard. So I could either go into my metrics and look at each uh, metrics, metric, and uh, or I could go into my dashboards and see uh, a full uh, a fully fledged dashboard. So you mean that the dashboard from you know the Excel file has already been created? Yeah, oh, it's okay. automatic. Oh, brilliant! Can I have a look at it, please? Sure. Okay, so as you can see, we have all our KPIs, all our metrics. They have been uh, generated automatically. Uh, we have uh, the number of clients' visits, uh, product boats, uh, turnover and turnover forecast. Um, we have our um, KPIs that have been uh, generated generated automatically. Of course, you can now uh, configure it, parameter it, apply filters, and really do the analysis um, with Beetle. But as you can see, uh, you you don't need to do anything. Uh, um, and f you have a, a dashboard that is made from scratch. Okay, so um, can we actually change these ugly graphs there? Uh, sure, as Matthew, um, you know, Matthew asked for it, so you can uh, <laughs> very simply uh, click on the little pencil here uh, and uh, change the appearance of your uh, KPI. You can also uh, do other things, you can change uh, its title and you can apply the filters. Um, so you could, uh, for example, do client visits by uh, by cities and use a map. So you can select um, the map. It's a representation that I really like. So you can also make your graph a little larger. And I'm going to select city on uh, on my Excel file. Oh yeah, city. 
um, and uh, as you can see uh, the city column in the in our city column uh, there are only names of uh, cities and um, that, so that is to say that you don't need um, geographical coordinates, precise longitude and latitudes. Uh, Beetle is going to translate it uh, himself. So I selected cities and I can look at the number of client visits by cities. I'm also going to suppress the target. We'll uh, go over uh, this point in a few minutes. Or not. Or not. <laughs> and I'm going to save the changes. Nothing target is important. But. Okay, so that's the new graph you've just created there. No. What's that 42 there, then? Well, uh, during the period studied, yeah. there has uh, been uh, 42 uh, visits in uh, several uh, cities in the United States. And uh, oh, that's the, the total amount of visits in the US, is that correct? Oh, no. Oh. This is the, that is the total amount of in visits our, in our guy. In, in our guy. Oh, yeah. okay. okay, brilliant. Uh, for uh, this uh, period. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, of course, we could uh, set up our dashboard differently. I could select all the month for the period, and uh, the graphics are going to, the KPIs are going to update uh, themselves. Mm -hmm. So, well, a guy is uh, still the most visited city, as I can see. Oh, no. Aber no. Mm. Arga is uh, still the most uh, visited city, with uh, 100, 109 uh, visits to our clients. Brilliant. And, uh, well, you can, of course, uh, Zoom, uh, zoom in to have uh, more uh, clarity uh, on uh, on the map. Okay. Hey, awesome. All right, Simon, it's all fine and dandy. Um, but what if I wanted to add another uh, data source? Uh, let's say, for example, I've got we use a, a CRM called Salesforce. Probably yeah. About it. Yeah. Um, and I want to add to my Excel uh, spreadsheet. Um, a query uh, from uh, Salesforce. Can I do that? Yes, of course. We can really uh, mix data with uh, with Beetle. So I'm not going to show you the whole process again. You know, I'm not going to go uh, into my Salesforce account and uh, show how I uh, uh, uploaded my data. So the process is, you know, very basic. Basically, it's exactly the same thing. You go into your Salesforce account, you do your query, you upload it in Beetle. So I have my uh, dashboard. That is automatically generated right uh, here. Um, I have my uh, indicators um, created by Beetle. So annual revenue, number of employee, number of locations, and uh, number of accounts, okay. my time periods. I have everything here. But y as you explained, you you want your data to be mixed. So let's say you have data in Excel and Salesforce. You're not just going to do uh, one dashboard for each data source. So that, that, that's your connectors in Beetle. You're going to mix everything uh, in the same place. Uh, you can do that by uh, creating a new metric, advanced metrics. And so it's going to be a revenue forecast by, my, by the number of employee. And you've got all the, the calculator and, and the formulas type. Yes, you you can you can do advanced uh, calculation. Okay, brilliant. So you can go uh, and pick your metrics. You can pick your metrics from any uh, any dashboard. Mm -hmm. So you know, really, I, I I did not even need to go and and take my metrics. I could have uh, been looking right now and picking it uh, in my different dashboards. So here I'm going to uh, use my uh, Salesforce. Um, dashboard. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use uh, revenue forecast. So I select it. Mm -hmm. I then divide it by the number of employee. So the number of employee. And we're done. We just need to uh, configure everything. So I'm going to um, select sales as a category, uh, business activity as an access. Um, well, no, no target. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bigger. Maybe we need a chart. Oh, well. We need a chart indeed. 
So I'm going to select the basic basic column chart, mm -hmm. and I'm going to add this new chart. And it's there. Oh uh, yeah, and now we have our revenue <coughs> forecast by employees. Okay, it's brilliant. That's so we brilliant. we've divided everything by the number of employee, and we have a we have precise number. I've could mm -hmm. and you know I can then customize it and apply some some filters and and go into even more uh, detail. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I mean, so so brilliant. Um, now we have this wonderful uh, dashboard, uh, but I guess you can share it with the entire world. Yeah, you can customize it and uh, you can share it with with the entire world or your team or just yourself. Okay. Yeah. We and and the the innovative thing is that you are not just sharing sharing static uh, results. Um, you are, for example, you could export it as a as an Excel file. You could export it as a PDF. Okay, well, that's that's pretty basic and that's static. Um, the the real innovation is that if you go into uh, publish, mm -hmm. you can edit a link, uh, and 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 your uh, the viewers of your dashboard will be able to go um, through this link and see a dashboard that will be both interactive and per personalized. So personalized because you have the ability to select uh, relevant information. Um, you can select specific information that you want to share with them. And uh, you can also um, select... Um, and, you, and, and you can also um, keep the data updated and keep the data flowing. Okay. So they have relevant information, but <clears throat> if you, if for example, you are updating um, data, I don't know, on a daily, on a monthly, uh, you, you can even go down, um, um, yeah, to the hour, uh, and and they going to see the da the data and the dashboard that is updating itself. Really, to and the so, hour, really. Yeah, and and they can can release it um, anywhere. You know, they, they can take take their phone and uh, access uh, the dashboard from their uh, from their tablet or their phone. So it, it really enables team to to work correct, co collaboratively. As I don't know about you, Matthew, but um, I once worked in a company and we had massive Excel files, you know, like sixteen tabs, and we, we we kept exchanging them, like because we were both working on them. We, we, both of us were we were a team of two working on lot and lots of lots lot of documents, and we kept updating the files, but we we were updating it together. So it was really a mess because you know we, we they were, were they were never matching because we, we were uh, at the same time modifying it uh, and, and so you know now you can modify this um, and and uh, it, it will update itself automatically okay it's brilliant. so no back and forth of email yeah so I'm, I'm sending it to uh, someone named Simon Pyrus that's me okay that's you uh, I'm going to select uh, specific information. So, for example, I'm uh, not going to share the information revenue forecast um, or forecast by employee. So you're actually hiding stuff from yourself. Exactly. Mm, clever. <laughs> uh, I could also hide from myself information uh, in the filters. Mm -hmm. Or in the date, the, in the dates. I could select okay. a specific date. Okay, brilliant. But you know, the principle is uh, is the same. Well, no, I mean, I would go into details and say that it's even more subtle than just hiding everything <clears throat> um, massively in a way, because you can really go deeply in and uh, select what you are hiding uh, uh, within within a given uh, field. For example, I can go into account created by our account last modified by mm -hmm. and uh, an account number and I can then select some specific um, specific field that I will uh, that I will keep and share so I'm, I, I you know instead of hiding all the account number mm -hmm. I can select some account number that I will uh, that I will share okay. and I'm going to allow navigation inside the relaxation which means that the people with whom I'm going to share my dashboard will be able to go through the account C, D, so they will have a degree of interactivity, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they won't see, well, they won't be able to see the other accounts. Okay. So, 
we're done. Everything is uh, set up, mm -hmm. and uh, I can, I can, you know, I can even choose not to send the email and just take the link that we've generated and, uh, for example, set it up in a, on an iframe e on a, on, a, on a website. Okay, so I can stick that directly on my website. Yeah. Right. Okay. You can you can do even better and select a single indicator and put it on a website. Okay. Brilliant. Um, here we have a default message. Mm -hmm. uh, I could customize it. Yeah. I could add a layer of protection by uh, adding a password. I can uh, preview my publication, which is always useful. Sometimes you get messed up. You send an email to the wrong person, or send the wrong send the wrong information. Always, yeah. always indeed. And uh, now I'm going to publish. And as you can see, I can track. Um, whether my dashboard has been seen mm -hmm. or not. Um, I can update what I want to show or not to show mm -hmm. to the people I'm, I'm working with. Uh, and uh, I can um, even select um, add a reminder option in a way. So let's say you are um, absent-minded like me and you delete your emails. You delete the email with the dashboard link and you won't have access to, uh, to your dashboard anymore. But with our uh, with our um, reminder, you won't need uh, you won't have this kind of issue uh, now, because you 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 have your uh, automation and I can automatically uh, send a reminder uh, every week. So let's say you have new data in your dashboard that is uh, coming from well from Excel from uh, from Salesforce from a wide variety of uh, sources, and uh, those those new data are um, refreshing your uh, your dashboard every week. So okay. you want you want a, an email that mm -hmm. is going to be sent to all your contacts saying, "Hey, take a look at uh, at this. You know, we have new information on uh, uh, on the dashboard." Okay, brilliant. So it's pretty useful. It is indeed. And now I'm going to look at my emails, and I'm going to look at my dashboard. So, which is not going to be the same as you just built up. Yes, indeed. Yeah, you know, it's going to be customized. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have a special uh, perspective mm -hmm. because I've select, I've selected um, some specific account numbers. So, if we go into account numbers, we have only, well, only a few account numbers. Uh, whereas, you know, on my uh, other dashboard, we have a lot more uh, account numbers. And um, and the, the the numbers obviously are not the same either because all the uh, data that are associated with um, with the account uh, CDs yeah. are uh, are simply not there. So you do not have the same uh, annual revenue. You do not have the same number of employees and so on. Okay. Um, so also you can uh, notice that. Uh, a specific um, graph is missing because mm -hmm. I have I hidden it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. From the person with whom I'm I'm sharing. Yeah, and as you can see, you know, it's not it's really not static. I can I can go from uh, period to period. I well, I don't I don't like this kind of um of display. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I prefer you know, my menu as a uh, in dates. So I can select the number of months that I want to have a look at. I'm going to select all the years. And so you know, I, I can select some specific period in time. I can, uh, yeah. This is brilliant. And so I have nice my, um, I also have, you see my, um, my signals. Mm -hmm. I call this, um, you know, um, it's it's what trends. Yeah, trends, yeah. or or even uh, it's what uh, Stephen Few, uh, the expert on data visualization, called this um, situational awareness. It, mm -hmm. it really helps maintaining a situ situational awareness. You don't have time to go through the numbers. You need uh, every hours to be reminded or to be notified if something is going wrong. So you can you can see the colors that are changing, and you know that if something's re something is red, you need to do uh, to take actions. So of course, on Beetle, for example, we could uh, upload data from Google Analytics, mm -hmm. and these typically are the uh, uh, type of situation in which you want uh, situational awareness. Because something goes wrong on your AdWords campaign, you mess up something, you 
you, you, your your visits are, are going to, to, to fall down by the hour and, and you can see it in the numbers. So you need to be reminded, you need to have this bright red light telling you something is wrong, man, you need to do something. Anyway. Okay, Simon, so how could you sum up in a few words this online solution? Well, I would say that we are pretty simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, in a few minutes, we've uh, upload, uh, uploaded data from uh, several sources, uh, created our dashboards, and uh, and and blend and we we blend our our data. So that that was a uh, that was simple, um, and we also uh, were also interactive. We, we, you can really interact, share, collaborate, um, uh, collaborate with people in your team, and 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 these people could be, you know, as you say anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So we, we are also mobile. We're, we're mobile in terms of, uh, of geography. You don't need to be in the same space, in, not even in the same country. Uh, and, and you can look at our dashboard from, uh, from any, anywhere. You know, you, since we're web-based, yeah. you can have uh, your tablet or your smartphone. And and, uh, device, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, brilliant. Uh, so, um, are we happy and done? Are we done and happy? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, we, we could go on for hours, you know, but for yeah. that, uh, you can you can get in touch with uh, a member of our sales team. Awesome. Well, thanks for that, Simon. No, thank you, Matthew. And hasta luego.